Today we are going to learn about the try, what it is, how it works, what it's used for, and how to implement one in Go. Before I start, I should note that the word try ought to be pronounced tree, as in retrieval, but since trees are such ubiquitous data structures in their own right, like many others, I've chosen to call them tries. A try is in fact a tree. It stores strings or string value pairs in nodes which represent common prefixes. A try starts life as a single node, which, in addition to a pointer to a stored value, contains, in this example, 256 possible pointers to other try nodes. Each pointer represents a single byte, and so the first node's pointers each represent the first character in a string. Uh, for example, suppose we wanted to insert the key value pair cat black into a try. We start with an empty node, which represents the empty string. We take the first letter of our key, C, find the corresponding pointer associated with it, in this example the number 99, which is the standard ASCII code for the letter C, and since it's empty, we create a pointer to a new node. We continue this way with A and T. And now that we've reached the end of our key, we set the value to black. Now suppose that we insert the key value pair car white into the try. As before, we start with the empty node. We go to C, but since now a pointer already exists, we just move to that node. We do this for A as well, and we create a new node for R and assign the value white. Such is the basic structure of a try. Let's move on to implementation. Create an empty file named try.go. I created this file in the source slash tutorial slash try folder in my go path. We will start by stubbing out some types and the methods tries implement. Create a try type, which is a struct, and leave it empty for now. Also create an iterator type, which will be used to implement sorted iteration over our collection. As is customary, the first function we want to create is a new function, which will create our try. We just call new try. The next method we want to create is the get method. Get returns the value associated with the specified key, or nil if it doesn't exist. For flexibility, it takes a slice of bytes rather than a string. It returns the empty interface, which is used to represent an object of any type. For now, just return nil. Since we have a get method, we also need a set method. Set inserts or replaces the specified key in value. It returns true if this is a new key. It takes a slice of bytes, a value of any type, and returns a bool. Just return false for now. Since we can add things, we should probably also support deleting them. Delete removes the specified key from the try. It returns true if the key was found, it takes a slice of bytes and returns a bool. Just return false for now. Though optional, it's also usually nice to support a len method, which can tell us how many things are in the try. Just return zero for now. Our final try method is called iterator. It returns an iterator, and though there are a multitude of different ways to implement iterators in Go, we will emulate buffio.scanner. It supports three basic methods. Next, which moves the iterator to the next key value pair and returns a bool to indicate whether or not there's anything left. Key, which returns the current key, and value, which returns the current value. These are all the basic functions we need to implement. There are now two routes we could go. On the one hand, we could begin our implementation, or on the other, we could go ahead and write our tests first. Let's do the latter. Create a file called try underscore test.go in the same folder. Import the testing package and create a function called test try, which takes t star testing.t. For this example, I've chosen to use a series of table-driven test cases based on the examples we saw earlier. We test that setting new things returns true, old things returns false, that the length is incremented appropriately, that everything we added can be retrieved, that deleting things returns true when they already exist, that once removed they can no longer be retrieved, that the length is decremented properly, and finally that the iterator walks through the collection as we would expect. Now we will go to a terminal and run these tests. I will be using Go Convey, which has a browser-based UI which will rerun these tests and alert me every time something is changed. Of course, all the tests fail, so let's start making them pass by actually implementing our try. We'll start with get, because it's very simple. To do so, we will need a private type to represent the structure of our node. We can simply call it node, and give it three fields, value, which can be anything, children, which is an array of 256 node pointers, not a slice, mind you, and length, which represents the number of pointers that are not nil in the children. This will make the implementation of delete simpler later. 
Now add to the try type a field called root of type node, and a field called length of type int. The get method is straightforward. We start at the root, and byte by byte we consume the key until we've reached the final node and return its value. There are three cases. One of the interior expected nodes doesn't exist, and we just return nil, or all the nodes are there and the value doesn't exist, or finally the value does indeed exist. Either way, we just return the value. Which does mean that you can't store nil in this try. The set method is very similar to the get method, except rather than failing if a node doesn't exist, we create it and assign the pointer appropriately. We then do a check to see if a value exists, and if it doesn't, we set it, return true, and increment our try length. Otherwise, we just replace the value. Delete is more complex. The naive approach is straightforward, walk to the appropriate node and clear the value, but we also want to delete nodes which both no longer have any children, nor do they contain a value since they no longer serve any purpose in the try. To do this, we create a path, which will be every node we visit. Like with get, we fail fast if a node doesn't exist, because that means what we're trying to delete already doesn't exist. Once we've reached our destination, we clear its value. And then if it has no children, we remove it from its parent, and repeat the procedure for all the other nodes in the path. Finally, we decrement the length of our try and return true, because something was actually removed. Len is trivial. Iteration is a recursive three-step process. Suppose we are at an interior node of our try. First, we return the value of the node, if there is one. Next, we walk all of our children recursively, and finally we move back to our parent. If we have no parent, this must be the root node, in which case we're finished. And so, as we've traversed the try, we need to keep track of where we came from, so we can return the parent, of which node we're currently pointing to, of the key we've built so far, remember that in a try we don't actually store the key in our nodes, rather the key is the path by which we got to the node, and a position so that we can know what to do next. Create a private inode type, which we will use for this process. It has four fields. Parent, which is a pointer to another inode, and thus creating a linked list. Node, which is a pointer to the current node. Key, which is a slice of bytes. And POS, which is an integer. Now embed a pointer to inode in our iterator, and implement the tries iterator function by returning an iterator with an inode which has a nil parent, a pointer to the tries root node, an empty byte slice, and negative one for the position. Next, we will implement our three cases. Negative one means that we should return the value. If there is no value, we move on to the next case. If the position is greater than 255, that means we finish this node and should return to the parent. If there is no parent, we're completely done. If position is between zero and 255, then we need to visit every child. For each one, we create a new inode, append the appropriate prefix byte to the key, and set the position to the new inode to negative one. By putting all of our logic into our next function, the key and value functions become trivial. For key, return the inode key. For value, return the inode node's value. Now all our tests should pass, but we're not quite done, as it would also be nice to test the performance of our try. Let's compare it to Go's built-in map type. Go to the try underscore test.go file and add an init function at the bottom, where we can generate some random data to test against. We also need to create a map type that implements the same functions as our try. Since maps don't normally support byte slices as keys, we turn them into strings. We now add four benchmark methods. Two for set, and two for get. For get, we first set our data, then reset the timer before getting our data. In this way, the setting of the data does not influence the benchmark of the getting of the data. Now go to a terminal and run test-bench.start, which runs our benchmarks. And as you can see, our try is not all that different than the native Go map type. Now tries have two basic advantages over the built-in map type. Namely, a try is actually a sorted collection, which also supports prefix matching, something a hash table can't do efficiently. So you might wonder, given that tries are simpler and have more features, why don't we use them as the basis of a map type instead of a hash table? Well, what's not accounted for in our benchmark is the fact that tries use a whole lot more memory than hash tables, with each node having 256 pointers, most of which are probably not set, there is a great deal of wasted space in a try. There are of course ways of dealing with this problem, but that's a topic for another day.